good early morning. <laughs> it is Friday, April 7th. It is a little before 12.30 a.m. Yes, I'm up quite early today. Well, not even up because I didn't sleep. I did have a nap earlier, but I am going to sleep here soon because I'm catching the night bus in Santander to Madrid. Um, you know, we usually have a night bus that comes at like 12.45, 1 a.m. Uh, from here to Madrid. It's usually like a five and a half hour ride. And the reason why it's easier to go to Madrid um, from Santander is because flights out of Madrid are much, much cheaper than they are out of Santander. So the reason I'm traveling today is because it is Semana Santa. So Semana Santa is basically Holy Week and basically we have like 10 days off of work <laughs> because of Easter and all the holidays. So you know me, if there's a holiday, that means I'm getting gone. So this series of vlogs is going to be a big one because I'm doing five countries <laughs> in 10 days. Um, so this one is going to be crazy huge. These are all countries I've never been to before. And this will put me like over the 20 country mark of like countries I visited. This will be like, oh, 20, 21, 22. So that's really exciting. So the first country I'm visiting in this series is Hungary. And I'm going to their capital of Budapest. So I'm leaving here from Santander. In a few, I'm about to call the cabify now to take me to the bus station, take the bus to Madrid, probably get there a little after 6 a.m. And then I have some lag time in Madrid because my flight from Madrid to Budapest isn't until 2.40 p.m. So this vlog is going to be a little bit of Madrid, but a whole lot of Budapest. I'm very excited for this one. So you already know. Come along, let's go. Okay, hello, good morning. It is 6, 10 a.m., so very early. Um, the bus ride here was very smooth. Um, like I said, it was probably a little over five hours. We had made two stops before the stop here at Madrid Airport, and then there was one more stop. I don't know where that was, but I wanted to get dropped off at the airport. It is still too early, I think. I wanted to find somewhere to drop my bag before I go around the city a little bit. Um, but it looks like everything doesn't open till like 7. Um, so that's fine. I'm just going to sit here, charge my phone, do some research. And by that time, it'll be time for me to drop my bag off somewhere and head on and I don't know. Y'all know I don't know what I'm doing here in Madrid. I did not plan any of that. I did plan everything else though. So yeah, um, we are still masked up, okay? There's too much going on out there. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's what we got going on. I was trying to figure out how to get from where I was to the main terminal. So I, the bus drops you off at terminal T4. And I'm on the bus now. It's like a shuttle transfer, similar to how some airports have like trains, whatever. It's a shuttle bus transfer to take me to terminal T1, because that's where my flight is later. And there I'm going to look for the luggage storage service. So yep, this is the bus. Regular bus. <laughs> like 20 minutes of walking around this airport thinking it's inside the airport I go on Google Maps it's clearly outside the airport across the street <laughs> but that's okay I made it I dropped off my bag so I'll come back here to pick it up and now I'm just gonna go outside and do stuff yeah so now I only have my backpack which is nice because I did not want to have to wheel that around during my excursions of the day I 
I just got off the metro and oh my gosh, it is quiet. Like, it's a little after 8 a.m. Eh. Yeah, it's 8.07 a.m. Other than those cars, it is... It is basically quiet. I guess because it's Good Friday, maybe. Um, but I ended up taking the metro because I want to see this park. And by the time I look around at the park, it'll be time for me to get back on the metro. Because since I'm in a big city like Madrid, I looked and I wanted American breakfast. But they don't open till 9 a.m. But I will be there at 9. <laughs> so I'm going to go there. But first, we're going to check out this park. I'm supposed to be at Parque del Retiro, I believe. I got to check my phone real quick. <laughs> Y'all will know when I know. Okay, I know the sign says Florida Park, but I promise I'm in the right area. This just must be Florida Park area of Parque del Retiro, but you can see Los Jardines del Buen Retiro, so I'm here. when I first walked up here I was facing it backwards so what I recorded was backwards but this is as close as you can get because as you can see the pictures that you see on the internet are like from over across the lake taking a picture of this whole landscape here so y'all just got a different little view a up close and personal view um, but it's really nice and you know the sun is rising you see like the reflective like it's giving like it's giving this is cute this is cute It opens at 10, so I won't get to see the art that's inside the Palacio de Cristal, but I tried to record a little bit through the door. Um, I don't really know what's in there, but the building looked cool, so I wanted to come see it. And it's really picturesque here by the little pond and the birds and the sun. It's just nice to be one with nature. So yeah, I think I'm about to make my way um, over to where the breakfast spot is because it is 8.31, so I want to make sure I can figure my way to get out of this park and then get back to the metro. Um, so yeah. Okay, I have made my way. Uh, the bus should be here in like five minutes, but what's actually funny is I have been to Parque de Retiro before because this is exactly where I was the last time I was in Madrid, but all that stuff I saw in the park today, I did not see the last time. So that's how you know how big that park is. I feel like I saw a completely different side than I did yesterday, or uh, not yesterday, the last time I was here. But you can see, we're here at the bus stop, so we're going to head to breakfast. Oh yes, the sun is definitely shining here. Um, so yeah, I think the restaurant is literally right here. So I think those are people waiting outside. So yeah, I'm finna, I'm finna go right now but yeah the bus ride was like three four minutes So I'm not gonna clink the camera this time. I'm gonna just put it down. Mm. 
and that's what fresh orange juice. Yeah. Yeah. Everything else seems normal. I want to try these grits. <laughs> so let me see. They could use a little butter, a little salt, but you know, they did all right. They did all right. All right, I'm finna eat. Bye. So I just finished at the restaurant. I think it was pretty good for their interpretation of, you know, American style food and breakfast. I usually really don't eat pork, but they said they had candy bacon. So I did want to try it. And honestly, I am really glad that I did because the candy bacon was probably my favorite thing that I ate today <laughs> on that menu. That candy bacon was bomb. I could have eaten just the whole plate of that. Um, so now I'm about to do a little bit more sightseeing. Sorry if I sound stuffy. My allergies are still like bothering me. And I'm just trying to get myself together because it's vacay time. Um, but yeah, I'm going to some like main plaza thing, whatever. I forgot the name, but I'll remember the name when I look at it again. I'm taking the subway there. So yeah, I'll probably do that and then maybe see one more thing and then head back to the airport so that I am not late <laughs> for anything going on today. So I have made it here to the Palacio Real de Madrid. Um, it looks cool. Like you can see <laughs> this area I can say is very, very touristy. I've heard so much English out here and I never hear this much English when I'm in Santander. Like nobody really speaks English. So there are a lot of tourists here. Um, I've never been in this area in my time in Madrid. So it's cool to see something different. I'm squinting because of the sun. Um, but yeah, I wanted to come out here and see and it's dusty. Everybody kicking up dust. I'm going to come out here and see. I'm going to walk around a little bit. Um, but I did want to factor in the time that's going to take me to get back to the airport. Probably about 30 minutes or so. So I want to make sure that I leave here around 1130-ish. So I can get back there around noon. Still at the plaza, but at this area where it's like a lookout, which is just what I just showed you. So it's literally an overlook of basically the city of Madrid. So it's gorgeous. So I just looked it up and it's going to take me from where I'm at now, almost 45 minutes to get back to the airport. I have to get on the bus to the metro, to the other metro to get back to the airport. And then when I get back to the airport, I have to pick up my bag. Um, so I'm just going to do that. I'm not going to really record because I took my jacket off. It's hot. So I'm just going to do that, do that in motion. And then when I get to the airport, y'all will know. But yeah, this has been my little day out excursion in Madrid because why stay in the airport? We have a few hours to kill. So yeah, see you soon. Okay, so it is literally like 12.02. So right on time. I just picked up my bag. It was 10 euros to store my bag for, I guess, like five hours or whatever. So it looks like it's crowded in there from when I had to walk from the metro. So I'm just gonna go through security and do all that and then see y'all after. Okay, so I have made it through security. It's a little before 12.30, it's 12.24. I'm at the terminal like near or the gate near where I'm gonna be boarding. They haven't released like the gate info yet. So I know it's gonna be C, D or E. So I'm in D just in the middle. It is hot. It is hot in this airport. So I got water and I got a red wine. I'm just gonna sit here and chill until they release the gate. Then I'll probably move a little closer. I don't get to Budapest until like six. So maybe I should eat something, I don't know. But yeah, that's what I got going on. Okay, so it's now 1.56. Officially gotten in the boarding line to Budapest. It's shorter right now. You know, I'm flying with Ryanair, AKA Europe Spirit, but I do have priorities so that I can go through and put my 
rolling carry-on in the overhead bin. That's what priority means for Ryanair, basically. So I'll show you the line. I see our plane. So it looks like everything will be happening on time. It is 2.24, have officially boarded the plane to Budapest. The flight is supposed to be three hours. I'm sorry they're playing this music. I hope you can hear me, but I'm about to go to sleep. So I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> It's 5.54, so a little before 6 o'clock, and we have landed here in Budapest. So I'm going to figure out the airport, because obviously I've never been here. Figure out the airport, figure out how to get like a transport car so I can get to my Airbnb. Okay, I'm here. I bought a 72-hour transport card using like this kiosk. So I hope that that works for like the metro, the bus, etc. I think it should, at least from what I could gather, but we're about to find out. Um, so the bus comes in like five minutes. I'm going to take the bus. Then take the metro, then that should take me to where my Airbnb is. Okay, y'all, it was a lot of hullabaloo from getting on the bus, all of that metro. It was just a lot, a lot, a lot, so I wasn't recording, but I'm here at the B&B. It's very cute, quaint, and Hungarian, so I'll show you that. And I got to hurry up and get ready so that I can eat before this river cruise at 10 o'clock. So this is about to be quick. Okay, it was quick, but I'm, I'm ready. I showered and changed clothes. Um, so I'm about to head out. I'm about to catch the tram. So not the metro, the tram um, to head towards the area where the river cruise is and try to get dinner over there. Okay, I have to be really quick because music is playing, but I found a traditional Hungarian restaurant. So I'll show you what I'm getting. So after I had got off the tram near where the boat cruise was going to be, I found this Hungarian restaurant because I really wanted to try some traditional Hungarian food, obviously, while I wasn't hungry. So I picked that out, and the man, that was a good choice because you basically get to try everything. So there was some beef, some veal, some chicken, and I don't know what those dumpling things were, but they were really good. This is me trying the beef. The beef was my least favorite just because it was a little chewy. That was dumpling thing. It was really, really good, as you can see, and the veal was really good. So overall, I liked it. So that was the spot for dinner. Hopefully you can hear me. I'm yelling. I'm by the road. Um, it was really good. It was a lot of meat, like chicken, beef, veal, dumpling, potato. Uh, I ate as much as I could, but the food was really good. So I'm glad I finally got to try some traditional Hungarian food. Now I'm walking over to the pier to where I'm going to get on the boat for the tour. Um, now for the tour, they said that the city turns off the lights at 10 p.m. and my tour is at 10 p.m. So I don't know what exactly we're going to see. Um, so whenever I find out, you'll find out. <laughs> It is 9.38 p.m. Um, I think I've made it to where the boat comes. At least that's where the directions on Google Maps told me to come. The tour starts at 10. It is cold. That's why my hood is on. My jacket is on. It is cold. It is colder here than where I live in Spain. It is like 42 degrees right now, but it feels like 39. Yeah, feels like 39. So it is quite cold. Oh, I think that's our boat. Um, I'm gonna be honest with y'all right now. I'm gonna be on the inside. I'm not gonna be on the outside because it's cold. And being on top of that water, eh, uh-uh, no. I'm gonna be inside. So there might be some glare from the recording, but I am not, <laughs> I might pop outside for a second. But no, I ain't gonna be up there at the top the whole time because that's just, that's just crazy. That's just crazy. Uh-uh. I booked this tour on Get Your Guide. I think it was like 
20 euro for the unlimited Prosecco cruise and yeah they did not let your glass empty but this was my favorite part of the tour this is probably the most scenic part of Budapest at night that when people see pictures of Budapest this is what they look at I wish I could have recorded more but like I was saying it was cold and it was wet so but this is probably what you wanted to get anyway the essence of the tour because shortly after this around like 10 30 10 45 they the city shuts off the lights anyway so we were just drinking and enjoying our time hello and good morning it is saturday april 8th it is 11 33 a.m so i am having a little bit of a late start today I know I didn't record much last night, but after the Unlimited Prosecco boat tour, and it was dark, so you really couldn't see much from where I was, and I did not want to go outside uh, to the upper deck because it was cold and it was raining. I had met these girls and they're really nice, and we had went out, um, and that was really it. I came home, but I wasn't like feeling inebriated or anything. But when I woke up this morning, my stomach was hurting so bad, and I was just exhausted. So, because of that, I decided to wait until I felt better because there's no need to be miserable when you want to go do things. Listen to your body, okay? So, we're good now. We're back. Um, I'm about to head to the bathhouse. My, the girls that I met last night told me that um, I need to hurry up and get there. So, I'm just going to take an Uber to hurry up and get there really quick before it gets too crowded. I don't know how long the wait is there at the bathhouse. Um, I know the name starts with the S. I do not know how to pronounce it. <laughs> I do not speak Hungarian. Um, and then at like 5 p.m. I have like a Hungarian wine tasting experience, which I'm excited for. And yeah, that's that's basically what I have planned for today. But, you know, there can always be something that pops up and you'll know. But yeah, about to go to the bathhouse. So hopefully we can get in. <laughs> Okay, I just got here. It's 11.55, so it's a little before noon. Um, it's a little crowded, but I'm hoping I can get in in like an hour, maybe? So I'll show you what it looks like. This is a really cool area, too. I feel like I'm not going to get to see as much of Budapest as I want to in two days, really a day and a half, but that's okay. You know, I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> It's 12:21. I'm in my swimsuit, ready to go to the baths. I'm not gonna take my camera. I'm gonna lock it up because I'm going to the baths. It would get wet. <laughs> I don't think I could do that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go and I'll be back. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you can see but this is like the outdoor bath area um, it's obviously cold out here but you can tell that like the water itself is hot it's 127 so I've been here for like an hour going to the different baths outside inside so I just wanted to show you all what it looked like because I'm about to get ready to go so I can get me something to eat and take some of the stuff back to the B&B before I come back out for my wine tasting at 5 um, so yeah but it's been a really cool experience it's just like going to a whole bunch of different hot tubs and I am the only, the only black person here. So everybody has been staring at me. <laughs> um, but it's been, it's been fine. Like, it's just like, dang, the only one? There's like hundreds of people here. But it be that way. So, yeah. <laughs> it is still raining. Uh, <laughs> so that's why I have my hood on. Um, I just finished at the spa, like getting myself together and ready. Because, you know, I had to change clothes, do all of that. It's basically 2 o'clock. It's 1.59, so it's 2 o'clock. Um, I'm actually going to head to this restaurant that's near the B&B because I was like, let's kill two birds with one stone. I can drop off my backpack, well, eat and drop off my backpack and charge everything I need to charge. So, um, yeah, the Airbnb host had recommended me this restaurant for Hungarian food. I'm trying to try a lot of Hungarian while I'm here. Um, so I'm going to take the bus and the tram to the restaurant to eat and then head back to the B&B, get myself together, and by that time, I'll probably go towards the area where the wine tasting is or maybe do some sightseeing but like in that area so I'm not far from my destination for 5 p.m. So it's a little after 2.30. I'm here at the restaurant now. You can see it's like a very local spot so I'm excited to try um, some more Hungarian food. I'm looking at this lamb 
this lamb slate soup, which is on their Easter special. So I think I'm a, I think I'm gonna get that. So they didn't have lamb, but they said they had the same soup with beef. So that's basically what I got. It looks like it has like beef, potato, some vegetable. Yeah, it tastes like a beef stew. Very flavorful. It's really good. So they call this a pancake. That's what I got for dessert. It looks like a crepe though, right? I'm trying to cut it now. Hold on. Okay, we back. It's so good and warm. And there's peach jelly on the inside. So it's really good. So I just got back to like my area um, at the B&B. But I forgot I didn't film like the outside because it's like an apartment complex. But it's like a indoor outdoor situation so i'll try to remember to record like the outside outside when i leave um in like an hour or so but i wanted to show y'all like what i mean you'll see so i'm on the first floor these are the stairs right this is the elevator obviously like you know hallway but look this is what i mean it's like inside outside Kind of. Yeah. And here I am. So yeah, I just wanted to show y'all that because I thought it was cool when I first got here and I was like, ooh, I haven't recorded that. So yeah, if you didn't find it fascinating, oh well, I did. <laughs> so yeah, that food was bomb. I'm glad I went to uh, my Airbnb host's recommendation because you know, like I said, the locals know what they be talking about. And they were really nice in there. Um, so I enjoyed the soup and the pancake. They call it a pancake. <laughs> but it looked like a crepe to me. Um, so yeah, I'm about to wash because I smell like poo. Um, and get ready um, and charge up everything um, so that I can go to my Hungarian wine tasting experience at 5 o'clock. Okay, we're back. We're fresh. We're clean. It is... 425 so i'm about to take the tram over to the wine tasting education spot <laughs> um it's only 60 minutes from here but you know i like to be early um so yeah it shouldn't take me that long to get there and yeah excited to try some hungarian wine i tried really hard but i could not find the name of this man's wine bar but i will link the get your guide experience so you can book the same one if you want but this is his wine bar where he hosts education classes and tastings on hungarian wine it is 4 49 i'm here <laughs> right on time <laughs> judge, wine journalist, and I used to have a wine store before this wine bar, and uh, as I wrote you in my email, I'm just crazy about wine. Before we start this wine tasting event, by the way, today we will taste only Hungarian wine from indigenous Hungarian grapes, so no international, I have a question for you, which I already know the answer. My question is, how familiar are you with Hungarian wine? In other words, how much do you know about Hungarian wine? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> you see, more or less that was the answer I was expecting. <laughs> but this is completely fine because that's the reason why we are here today. Let's face the reality. Nobody knows that Hungary is making wine, right? Maybe the neighboring countries, yes. But the other parts of the world, they just don't know that we are making wine. However, we have history of winemaking which goes back to Roman times, Roman periods. If you would like to have some good beer from this region, go to Prague, Czech Republic. But if you would like to have some good wine, please come here to Hungary. What do you think? What can be the reason why it's so hard to find some Hungarian wine in your country? Or why it's so hard to find some fine Hungarian wine outside of Hungary? There are plenty of reasons. 
among the reasons you can definitely find the domination of French, Italian, Spanish wine. I'm not telling mm -hmm. all the wine countries all over the world, but like South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, Chile, so on. Actually, we have a funny set saying, which goes like this. Hungarian wine is worth famous only in Hungary. <laughs> Another reason can be maybe the lack of marketing for Hungarian wine. Some of my previous guests just said funnily, maybe you drink all the wine you produce here in Hungary and you just keep it as a national treasure and you're just too envy to export it. Which sounds funny, but I can tell you, on the other hand, it's true. Why? Because it is proven by numbers and figures all the wine that Hungary is able to produce annually, we Hungarians are able to drink it all. <laughs> and if I taste this wine and cheers, I believe I can say that the taste just nicely, smoothly continues, but the nose was promising. In other words, it's very nice uh, citric. If I taste the wine and cheers, I believe I can say it with red berry notes. And if you taste the wine, please try to keep it for some seconds in your mouth. I mean, I just split it up, but still the taste is here in my mouth. Some years ago, and if you taste the wine and cheers, yes, this wine is very light, but it to me, almost, I mean, super light, almost like drink, rather like drinking of fruit juice or a grape juice instead of wine. Exactly. If I taste this wine, this wine is not only very smooth to me, but it's almost velvety, almost silky. And this is a very good example. This is it. You don't have to create the fullness, the this heaviest, it. but it's very Sweet. Yeah, also, it tastes exactly <laughs> like Portugal tonic. Yeah, yeah, it's sweet. It's sweet. Yeah. <laughs> if you, if you want to taste okay. Okay, so it's seven seventeen. Just finished at the Hungarian wine tasting. Um, Hungarian wine is one of the best wines that I've ever tasted. Um, it's very light. It's very nice. 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 It's very nice seven different wines so I mean it was a really really good experience and our guide like was really knowledgeable and I really enjoyed it because you know me if I'm gonna do anything I'm gonna find me a wine tasting so um, I have reservations for dinner in like an hour um, at 8 30 it's called the magic Budapest and it's like a Harry Potter themed restaurant and if you know me you know I love Harry Potter so I'm very excited um, to go here um, I'm not that hungry because I was nibbling on all that cheese and meat but I'm still gonna you know eat because I want to go out tonight because um, it's Saturday night in Budapest even though it's cold you know it's rainy whatever still like life life goes on um, so I'm about to figure out how to get from where I'm at to like over near the area where the restaurant is um, and yeah y'all will know when I know as I was making my way on the tram to the Harry Potter restaurant I actually stumbled upon a wine bar and I could not find the name of this one either and I am so sorry but they were so nice they gave me a complimentary glass of bubbles and I also got to try I think I only recorded one but I got to try two local red wines this is a Cabernet Franc light but it has good flavor it is a little after 
after 8.30. I'm here now. I had to rush from the wine bar. Was that I had met friends. I was up there talking, 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 talking. Um, but it's cool because I'm here. I'm glad I have a reservation because the line outside is thick. It's crazy. So I'm, I'm glad I have a reservation so at least I can get seated, you know, in like the next 10, 15 or whatever. Um, but yeah, we're here at the Magic Budapest. If you know me, you know I love Harry Potter. So when I saw this on TikTok, um, I wish I remember the name, but she was a black girl. Shout out to her. Um, that's why I'm here. So they're going to see me when they can. so weird because like look people be <laughs> and you just try to enjoy like your your life and I'm not blaming them like it's not me it's the fact that people just want to see and know what's going on inside the Harry Potter restaurant but like I don't know what that has me tickled I got the whiskey myrtle it has whiskey strawberry puree blueberry and lime shout out to Moan and Myrtle Big Slytherin out here, okay? I am, so. That is like juice. That is really good. But yeah, I'm gonna ask them to put the sword hat on me. But <laughs> yeah, Big Slytherin. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, can you tell me, uh, did you see the Harry Potter movie? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. And do you remember for the magic spells? Some. Let's see. What you mm -hmm. what you asking me about? Any any magic spells? Sure, any of them. Yeah. Here comes another magic. Madness oh. feast with chicken. Enjoy your meal. Thank you. So, do you remember for Expelliarmus? It's excellent. Very good. <laughs> Oh, that's dope. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Can I get a fork too? Yes, yes, Yeah. Of oh, that's cool. Thank you. Enjoy. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Mushroom tagliatelle. It's pretty good. It could be a little hotter. A bit hotter. Like, temperature. But, that's okay. It's time. I know what I am. Okay, ready? You yes. know? Yeah. Really? Yeah. What do you say? I am a Slytherin. Mm. <laughs> ready? I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's good? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing can remain secret in your head. Oh, he says you are in Ravenclaw. Really? Really? Okay, yeah. that's yeah. not bad. That would have been my second choice. Oh, okay, that's, that's perfect. <laughs> okay, super. <laughs> Yes, it is still misting or whatever out here, but it's a little after 10. It's like 10, 15, I think. Like, yeah, I just left the magic. Um, It was cool. The food was okay, but the drinks were really, really good. And obviously you're really there for like the experience, the ambiance. So I really enjoyed it as like a Harry Potter nerd. Um, but this is where I leave you all because I'm about to go out for the night. You already know that's no vlog city. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I leave for um, Bratislava, Slovakia, um, tomorrow morning. So we only have a little bit left in Budapest, and then we'll be on to the next vlog. That light randomly turned on. I was confused. Um, but yeah, so it's cool. I'll see. So I've been out to a couple clubs. It is 2:35. It was really fun. I went to an R&B club. And then I also went to like a silent disco party, but they were playing like Afrobeats and dance hall. And you know me, I literally love and am obsessed with Afrobeats and dance hall. So I was like, yes, like finally a party where music I can dance to the whole time. But I'm hungry. So I stopped at the McDonald's because 
every McDonald's is different. So I'm gonna show y'all what I got. <laughs> and yeah, that's gonna be it for Budapest, basically. Music is playing, so I'm about to mute this, but trying the spicy nugget. I know it's sped up, but this is basically me saying it's not spicy, but I liked it anyway, but it wasn't really that spicy. Hello and good morning. It is Sunday, April 9th. Uh, so happy Easter, happy Resurrection Sunday to all who celebrate. It is a little after 9. It's 9.11 a.m. here in Budapest. Um, I am leaving today. So today I'm leaving Budapest and heading to Slovakia, uh, the capital of Slovakia, Bratislava. So I really, really enjoyed Budapest, honestly, y'all. Um, is two days here enough? No, I don't think so. But I mean, hey... I got to try and do some of the things that I wanted to do and I can always come back, right? That's the point of doing, me wanting to do these five countries in 10 days is to get like a little taste of all these places I've been wanting to go. And now I know like, okay, like Budapest is like that for sure. I have a bus from here to Bratislava at 10.50 a.m. So what I'm about to do is I'm about to go to the little cafe up the street, get some breakfast, get some tea because I cannot be sounding like this all day. I think I was just literally screaming last night at the club. That's, I mean, that's what I sound like. <laughs> um, but I had a great time here in Budapest. Like I said, would definitely come back. And yeah, but we got to go on to the next. So I'll see y'all at breakfast. But after that, that's really all I got for you. I also realized I forgot to record the outside of the Airbnb, so I'm going to do that for y'all right now. But I'm here in the lobby on floor zero because we didn't know the ground floor in Europe is floor zero, <laughs> not floor one like back home. Um, so I'm going to show you. I'm going to try to turn the light sensor back on and show y'all really quick. <laughs> up in the corner but it's fine um, I got like a salmon croissant sandwich and I ordered like a pear and elderflower tea so hopefully that gets me together so I can sound like myself again but I'll show y'all here but the place is called Vaj V-A-J so cool but yeah it's, it's thick it's thicker than a snick in here people in here outside it's a lot going on so yeah Hopefully I'm sounding a little bit better because the tea was really good. Um, but that was the spot there. So it's right there on the corner. So yeah, it seems to be like a very popular spot. Um, so yeah, I mean, decent croissant, salmon croissant, you know, nothing crazy. Um, but that's pretty much it. This is the metro station I'm about to use to get from where I'm at now to the bus station. Um, so yeah, yeah. Let's do it. I'm at the bus station now. It was actually really easy. I literally went from one train to the other train and boop, it popped you right at the bus station. Everything happened so fast. Every time I pulled up to the metro, the train was there. So I had no time to record. We just had to keep it moving. But I'm here now. It is 1017. My bus leaves at 1050. It's either on platform two or three. That's what the little board thingy said over there. So. I don't know, I guess I like, I'm about to go find the platform and then, so I can make sure I know where I'm going and then if I have to come back, sit down here, whatever, but yeah, we're here at Nepligent. <laughs>
is 10.42 and I have officially boarded the bus to Bratislava. So this was Budapest and I will see you all very soon for the second country in 10 days.